How's it going guys? It's Ryan here and welcome to this low level or starter guide to Araxor. Now let me quickly talk for like literally less than a minute and then we'll jump right into the guide. Okay, so first thing, this is a low level guide, not in the sense that you can kill Araxor with level 60 stats, uh, but in the sense that this is going to be in no way elitist. This is going to focus on basic mechanics and what you need to know to get successful, consistent kills at this boss. I'm going to teach you all the mechanics and everything you need to know, but focus mostly on that. Uh, this guide, the goal is to take someone who has died a bunch of Araxor, who has failed, who can't do it, or who hasn't even tried it before, and show them everything they need to know to be able to get themselves consistent kills. Uh, that being said, the requirements are going to be the very first slide of the guide, so I will get right into that in just a second. Now, last thing I'm going to say before we start the guide is just this is not going to be easy if you have not done much high tier PVM before. And I've designed the guide so that anyone, even if you haven't done any PVM before, should be able to follow it and learn it and understand the mechanics. Now, a lot of the backing footage for this guide is done on a level 108 account that only has a spirit terror bird. The reason I've done this is just to sort of allow more people to have access to this guide and just to say you can kill this boss on a very low level account as long as you know the mechanics properly. Now, last thing that I always say, practice makes perfect. This is going to take a lot of practice, especially for those who haven't done much high tier PVM before. Uh, so just be prepared to try a couple times and fail a couple times. It is going to happen, especially if you're on a lower level account. There's a lot less room for error. Uh, so anyway, guys, that being said, let's jump right into the requirements. Okay, so into the base requirements for this guide, I'm going to require you to have 70 defense, 80 ranging, 37 prayer, that's for the protect from magic prayer, 52 summoning for a spirit terror bird, and then a few million coins for gear. Now, the reason I'm only including range is because when you are learning Araxor, the easiest way by far to learn is with ranging. Once you've got the mechanics down for ranging, it's pretty easy to transition to a melee kill if you want to do that, but ranging is the way to go when you're learning for a bunch of reasons that I'll get into when I talk about specific mechanics. Okay, so we talked about requirements, which is like base stuff that you need to make sure that you're actually getting a kill, but if you actually want to camp the boss for a long period of time, this is what I would recommend having. I'd recommend you have 85 ranging, 70 prayer, 91 plus herb lore with a boost for overloads, and also 68 plus summoning for a war tortoise. Now, you don't actually need any of these things, but I do definitely recommend them, especially if you're trying to kill a Raxor on higher enrages, which is what I'm going to talk about right now. Alright, so Araxor has a really, really cool enrage mechanic. What happens is every time you kill Araxor, the enrage will jump up 20% at the start of the next kill. And then it resets at daily reset time, which is 7 or 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every single day. Uh, which means the more you kill it, the more challenging it gets. So if you're very good at it, you can do it a lot of times a day. But if you're just learning, you can only do it once or twice a day and it won't get too difficult. The enrage affects the accuracy and the damage of all attacks. Okay, before I talk about what gear to use, a little bit of quick information about the boss. Araxor is level 2500, has 400,000 life points, is poisonous, attacks with all three combat styles depending on what combat style you are using, is immune to poison, and is also immune to stun. So with that in mind, let's get geared. Alright, so now I'm going to talk about gear and invent setup. Obviously, the main gear is very self-explanatory. Just use the highest tiered ranged gear you have, weapons and armor. Uh, but there are a bunch of other things that you need for this boss, and then some other things that will help you out a lot, especially when you're learning. So let's go right into that. Alright guys, this is the most basic low level entry level setup that you could bring to Araxor. So I've got a royal crossbow and royal bolts. Uh, I'm wearing full royal dragon head armor, archer's ring, arbital boots, Ceradomen's murmur, and I've got an Ava as a cape. Obviously if you don't have an Ava, just bring a skill cape. If you don't have a skill cape, bring a kiln cape. If you don't have a kiln cape, I guess bring an obi cape. Uh, now, there are two important things in my gear setup that you absolutely need to have when you're learning this boss. First one is a sign of life. People might go with a scrimshaw. There's no point when you're learning. There are so many mechanics that could kill you if you don't play your cards right. Bring a sign of life. It could get you kills that you wouldn't otherwise be getting, and it will save your life. Uh, next up is the sharpshooter aura. It doesn't have to be supreme, but whatever sharpshooter aura you have, make sure you're bringing it. It will help more than any other aura you could bring here. Okay, so now into my invent, I have an ectophile. You don't need this, that's just my method of getting to Araxor. You can either use an ectophile and run uh, from the ecofunctus right here, so that'll teleport you right to where my mouse is, and then Araxor cave is right there. Other options are you could just use the port serum lodestone, and then charter ship to port phasmatis, and then come out and then go this way. Uh, a couple different ways to get there, not really important, but for me, I have an ectophile because that's what I use to get to the boss. Next up, I have an anti-poison. You do want an anti-poison for the fourth phase because you will get poisoned and it can hit really, really hard if you don't have an anti-poison. Uh, next up, I have a grand ranging potion. The reason I don't have a defense potion is because I'm going to be drinking brews to boost my defense up. 
Uh, so yeah, we've got a Grand Raging Potion, Bruise, some Super Restores, and then other thing I have is a Dark Bow. The reason I have a Dark Bow is it's a Shield Bow. It doesn't actually matter. You could just bring a Shield, uh, anything that will allow you to use the Shield abilities. As you can see there, I have access to the Shield abilities, which you can use at times and they will help you out. Okay, so then the rest of my invent is just Sharks and the same with my Spirit Terror Bird. Uh, so yeah, that is the lowest level gear setup. Alright guys, so now I'm into a mid-tier gear setup. I'm wearing full armadal, I still have the archer's ring, I've got a skill cape, still have my sharpshooter aura and sign of life, and my main weapons are the shadow glaives. These things are absolutely amazing, almost as if they were built for learning how to kill a Raxor with. They're incredible and I'd strongly recommend them if you have them. Uh, my shield is an armadal buckler. You want to bring the highest level shield you can because you will be wearing it for a decent amount of time in the light path, but really it's up to you. You can do it with a wooden shield, just you're better off with a better one. Uh, so now, in my invent, I've got an overload this time and an adrenaline potion. Uh, same amount of bruise, restores, ectophile, and the anti-poison. Now, in my war tortoise, I have sharks. Okay, so now what we're looking at is an example of a high-level learning setup at Araxor. So as you can see, I've got augmented anima core of Zamorak gear, uh, ceramic mask, ascension grips, pernix boots, I've got a ring of death and an amulet of souls, a kiln cape, I've got the same aura and the sign of life. Obviously, once you know what you're doing, you'd swap that out for a scrimshaw, but when you're learning, you still want to have the sign of life. Now, in the invent, I've got a supreme overload potion, replenishment potion, anti-poison, a couple brews, a couple restores, a ring of vigor switch, an enhanced excalibur for some healing, as well as a strike bow for my shield switch. Uh, now, inside my yak, it's just full of sharks. It's the exact same. Okay, so now we're going to talk about paths and rotations. Pretty much, Araxor has three different paths and depending on which one you take the fight will act differently. Two of these paths will be open at any given time and they rotate every four days. The paths are Light Path, Minion Path, and Acid Path. Now the reason two of the paths are highlighted, that is Light Path and Acid Path, uh, the reason they're both highlighted is because that's the best rotation to learn on, when Minion Path is closed. This is because minions are a little bit tedious, a little bit challenging to learn, there's a good potential to kill yourself, and you also take more damage, so it's much better when Minion Path is closed. That being said, later in the guide I will show you how to do Minion Path, but I'd recommend strongly learning or trying your first kills on Light and Acid Path. Now let's not get ahead of ourselves, let's talk about the mechanics that are on all rotations, doesn't matter what rotation you're going through, doesn't matter what path, these are all mechanics that you'll have to deal with regardless of any of that. Uh, so let's talk about all of them one at a time, individually we'll go through them and we'll talk about what to do when they happen. The first mechanic is the web shield. What's going to happen is Araxor will encase himself in a massive web shield and then any damage you do to Araxor will be reflected back on to yourself. So basically it's a really good way to kill yourself if you're doing a lot of damage per second. When Araxor goes into web shield, you're going to get off the boss, put on a shield, use the resonance ability, use the preparation ability, and then use the provoke ability before resuming to attack the boss. The reason you're doing this is just to gain adrenaline while not actually doing any damage. Now, if you want to get really fancy, what you can do is you can actually do a high damage ability, something like Snipe, switch to a shield, and then use Resonance. If you time it correctly, you'll actually heal yourself a pretty nice amount of health, like maybe even upwards of 3,000. Problem is, if you don't do it correctly, you end up hitting yourself 3,000. So for a learner, I'd say it's not that worthwhile, but as you get better, you can try and do it, and it will help. Okay, the next mechanic we're going to talk about is the Cleave. Uh, what this does is it will actually pull you in towards the boss and then hit you for anything between 2,000 and 8,000 damage. Obviously, it can hit more than that if you're on a higher in rage. Now, a lot of people die to this, and it's actually super easy to avoid. There are two good ways to avoid it. First way, and the best way to avoid it, is just have freedom or anticipation active. When you have these abilities active, it will not actually pull you in at all, it'll just clean miss you. That's the best way to avoid it. Now, if you do not have freedom or anticipation active and you get cleaved, if you spam click away in the other direction, it will pull you in and you will run away before you actually get hit by it. So those are two really, really good, easy ways to dodge the cleave. Okay, the next mechanic is the web trap. What's gonna happen is Araxor is gonna shoot a spider web at you and it is gonna trap you. You need to spam click literally anywhere on the screen to get out of it. So that could be like underneath yourself, behind yourself, onto Araxor, doesn't matter. And then once you spam click enough and get carpal tunnel enough, then you'll be freed from it. Now, if you have freedom or anticipation active before this web trap happens, uh, what's gonna happen is you're gonna stay trapped for way less time and take a lot less damage. Okay, the last mechanic we're going to talk about is the spider egg mechanic. This happens on phases 2 and 3 in any rotation. Araxor will spawn either 2 or 3 spider eggs and then launch a bomb at you. What you want to do is you need to stand on top of the eggs so that the bomb hits the eggs and explodes them. If you do not do this, the bomb will hit you upwards of 3,000 damage and then 3 spider minions will spawn out of the eggs, which then you'll have to kill and deal with. 
Okay, so now we're gonna talk about rotation-specific mechanics for the light path. I'm gonna focus mostly on this, but I will talk about the other two paths briefly afterwards. The reason I'm gonna focus on light path is because when you're learning how to kill this boss, especially at a lower level, the light path is the best way to get a consistent kill without using too many of your supplies. So as soon as you start the first phase of the fight, you get to choose which path you want to burn down of the two that are available. The light path is the one that's all the way far to the right as you see right now. So before Araxor actually spawns in, you want to click on this path and the web will begin to burn down. That will open the path up to you. Once you enter the light path, Araxor will cover all of the light except for one spotlight. This spotlight does move around every couple seconds, but for the most part you want to stand in there as often as you can. If you are not in this light spot, you will actually get hit for consistent damage. It starts at 200, but it increases over time depending on your enrage. The only time you want to leave the spotlight is to stand on these spider eggs that Araxor will spawn so that a bomb does not hit you for 3000 damage like we talked about before. Light path is basically a tank test. You want to put on your shield. You don't need to attack anything in this path. You just need to stand in the light, stay alive. The other thing is Araxa will attack you alternating between ranged and magic attacks. This means that you can flick your prayers and save yourself a lot of food. The other thing you can do is you can utilize the resonance ability, anticipate ability, and devotion abilities, and they can all help save you some food as well and even give you hit points back. Now, once you've been in the light path for about 30 seconds, Araxor will charge towards you, and then four arrows will pop up on your screen. You need to click in the direction that Araxor is going. I will show you each different possible click. Uh, if you click the right way, Araxor will do 50% damage to the wall, and you will not take any damage. If you click the wrong way, Araxor will only deal 25% damage to the wall, and you will also be hit several thousand damage. So you want to make sure you're clicking the right way. It might take a little bit of practice, but overall it's very easy, and I will show you each different way you're going to have to click. Once the wall takes 100% damage, you can move on into the third phase. Okay, it's super easy. Araxar points both front claws to the right, you click the right arrow. Araxar points both front claws to the left, you click the left arrow. You can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard. Now there's also up and down. When both the claws come straight out towards you, you're gonna click up or press the up arrow and you will jump over him no problem. Last but definitely not least, he points both claws straight down, so you press the down arrow. It is absolutely the most complicated thing in the universe, just getting super easy, and then you just run through and you'll start into phase three. Alright guys, so I will discuss the other two paths briefly towards the end of this video, but first I want to get through phase 3 and phase 4, get one complete kill going through light path. Uh, so first off, let's go through phase 3. Phase 3 will combine the mechanics from the paths that are open regardless of which one you take. That is why when acid and light path are open, if you take light path, you'll still have to deal with acid path mechanics in the third phase. So let's jump right into phase 3. Okay, phase three is super easy. It's very similar to phase one where he'll go back to all of the same mechanics that we've already learned. He'll only add two different mechanics from the acid path. The first one you just saw there, which is a highly acidic spider appears nearby. What happens with that is before you finish all of his hit points, what you need to do is you need to lure all the spiders by clicking on them and then drag them back through a Raxor. Obviously, I will show you me doing this in just a minute. They can't kill you, they can't hurt you, just you need to remember to lure them through a Raxor so that he absorbs the acid before you move on to the last phase. Now, the other mechanic you just saw right there, he did what looked like a melee attack without actually meleeing, and then out of there you see a spider with an action bar. That is a one-hit spider. That is why you have a sign of life. That will one-bang you from full hit points, guaranteed, and that's why you have a sign, just in case you miss it. Uh, so you'll see it again in a minute, but basically a little area on the floor will start to glow a slightly different color. It's kind of hard to see, especially on lower details. Uh, so basically, if you see anything with an action bar charging towards you, just run away, surge away, escape away, get away as quickly as you can. And that's it. That's really all there is to the third phase. Uh, you're basically just chilling. It's exactly like phase one. You're just trying to do as much damage as you can, get his hit points down, uh, while waiting for the four acidic spiders to spawn. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it really just does continue. So we're just going to skip towards when I'm luring the spiders. All right, here's another one hit spider coming out. Uh, you'll see him do a melee attack like that without actually hitting me with melee. And then as you can see right there, as I click on it, I clicked on it to show you guys, uh, the floor glows a certain different color, a little bit of a different green. And that is where a one hit spider is going to come from. So you just need to run away from it. They're deceptively quick. If it gets too close to you, it will just jump at you and blow you up. Uh, so you want to make sure you avoid that. Uh, now, to lure the spiders, all you have to do is just click on them like I did right there, and then they will follow you, and then you can either run through Araxor or surge through Araxor, and that will lure the spider onto Araxor. And that's really all you have to do. Alright, as you can see just like this, I'm grabbing that spider, I'm clicking lure on it, it's gonna follow me, and then Araxor will heal 5,000 life points per spider lure, just make sure you lure all four of them because it will make the last phase really, really easy. And that's all for phase three, that's it. 
Okay, so phases one through three, piece of cake, right? I mean, once you know all the mechanics, it's not too bad. As long as you're actually counteracting the mechanics properly, there's a very low chance of getting KO'd. So, you know, even if you mess up, you might have to eat a couple extra food, but you're not gonna die. Now, phase four is a slightly different story. Araxi, everyone gets to Araxi and then freaks out and then dies. And it's really, really easy if you don't panic. If you pay attention to what's happening, it's actually not very complicated. So, you're gonna finish phase three and then you're gonna climb over onto this final platform. Araxi is going to eat Araxor violently and then begin attacking you. Okay, so Araxi has 100,000 life points. The first 50,000 life points of Araxi are exactly the same as phase one. It's exactly identical to phase one. There's only one difference. The only difference is that Araxi will alternate two attacks and two attacks with ranged and with magic. So what you need to do is you need to prey switch. Other than the prey switching, it's exactly the same as phase one. Now, one other tiny subtle difference is Araxi can also put an area in darkness and then you might get a little darkness spot, a little light spotlight that you have to stand in. But other than that, it's exactly identical. It's no more difficult than phase one. The only difference is you need to prayer switch. And my advice is if you're having trouble with the prayer switching, one, practice, and two, if you're just not doing it very well, what you can do is just make sure to keep your hit points high, make sure you're eating up and brewing up. And then that way, at least you won't get one hit by anything. You won't get comboed out. Okay, so the next section of Araxi is once he reaches 50,000 hit points. When Araxi reaches 50,000 hit points, it actually gets easier. He stops doing any other special mechanics, so you no longer have to use Anticipation and Freedom, and he will just attack you. His attacks will do a lot of damage, so you want to make sure you're hitting your Prey Switches. If you can use Devotion or Debilitate, it'll help you. But that's all between 50,000 and 25,000 life points. It's, it's super, super easy. This is the easiest part of the entire fight if you can Prey Switch properly. That being said, 25,000 is the dreaded acid core, which is about to happen right now. When the acid core comes, drink an adrenaline potion if you have one. If you don't, you just want to build up your adrenaline because when this core spawns, you actually lose a bunch of your adrenaline. You lose half your adrenaline and then this core will jump around. What you want to do is keep prayer switching and then as soon as the core lands on you, you need to move one square away and then stay in the same spot. That's it. Don't run around like a chicken without a head. Don't run around like a crazy person. All you want to do is do as much damage as you can and whenever the core lands on you, you'll be hit for a typeless damage between like 1 and 2,000, and then as soon as you do that, you are good to go. You move one square and it'll jump around again without hitting you. Now, if you have good damage per second, this goes really, really well, and another really good strategy is you can use the Death Swiftness ability at around 30,000 life points, and even though you lose all your adrenaline, you'll keep the effects. Uh, that's kind of a more advanced move though. But for a beginner, all you need to do is whenever the acid core hits you, move a square and keep your hit points high, you will be just fine. Once you reach zero hit points, congratulations, you just killed the spooter. All right, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about how Araxor spawns. So if you just enter Araxor normally, Araxor will spawn in any of the three combat styles and it's random. You do not want this. You want Araxor to spawn in the combat style weakest to you. It'll make your kill way easier. And there are two ways to do this. The first way is an instance. The instance will cost you 200,000 GP. And then what it'll do is it'll last for one hour. And then for one hour, you can enter Araxor and he will spawn weak to you. I would not recommend this. What I would recommend doing is getting yourself an Araxite Pheromone if you can afford it. It costs about 2 million GP and you just leave it in your invent. As long as it's in your invent and you have a free world, you can go into an Araxo fight and he will automatically spawn weak to you for free. I say for free because you could spend 2 mil on a pheromone, use it for a month, kill Araxor every day for that month, it'll always be weak to you, and then at the end of that month, you could sell it back to the GE for no loss. So that's why I'd recommend the pheromone, you just need to leave it in your invent, but of course the instance is always an option. All right, you guys know all the setups, all the mechanics. Let's put it all together and do one entire Araxor kill on the light path. Now you'll see for my gear, I have just a Royal Crossbow and Royal Bolts, as well as an Aura and a Sign of Life. I have literally no other armor. I did bring a shield, but I didn't even equip it just to make it even more difficult for myself. And you'll see by the end of the kill that I finished with like 25 or 30 food left. Uh, so anyway, I've sped it up and you'll take note of the mechanics as they're happening. But as you can see, we ran in, we burned down the web, and then you'll see what you wanna do is you wanna keep anticipation and freedom active. Araxor will do a special attack every five attacks. So every five attacks, what you wanna do is you wanna click on one of Anticipation and Freedom. And if you do that, they should never run out and you should always have one of the two active whenever he's gonna proc a special attack. Uh, now, if you don't have it active, it's not the end of the world. You'll take a little bit more damage. Uh, just make sure that you're ready to click to avoid a cleave if you do not have Anticipation or Freedom active. 
Uh, so yeah, that's really all there is to the first phase. It's very simple. You want to emphasize damage per second if you can. Obviously, I'm using a Royal Crossbow and I have literally no armor, so it's not very easy to emphasize damage per second when every single attack is hitting me. Um, but yeah, you'll see me use Devotion as a defensive ability. It's really, really helpful, as well as Debilitate, just to save myself a little bit of food. Um, but yeah, you'll just see me go through my thresholds. If you want a Death Swiftness, you totally can, and it's very worthwhile to do, especially if you have Adrenaline Potions. Uh, but yeah, not that important. Uh, so now I'm into Light Path. Obviously, whenever the Light Spot, the Spotlight shows up, you go inside it, and then when eggs spawn, you want to stand in the eggs, uh, or stand in the egg to defuse the bomb. And then, just like I said, I'm back in the spotlight, I'm just prayer switching. Now, if you're using a shield, I wouldn't let myself use a shield for the skill, but if you were to use a shield, you can actually resonance and you want to put your shield on uh, to save yourself some damage, give yourself some extra armor bonus on these ranged and magic attacks. But yeah, it's just a tank test. There we go, he just jumped at us the first time, we clicked the right way, and now we just need to wait. We've done half of the light path, and then, yeah, we just need to wait for the second half. He'll charge again in another minute, and we'll be good to go. But yeah, it's really just about standing in the little light spotlight, so that you're not taking too much damage. The damage just grows over and over again. And that's really all there is to it. You, you can use the surge ability and take advantage of it to get into the light spots. And I'd strongly recommend doing that just because it'll get you there even faster. But yeah, there we go. We've done the second dodge, the wall has broken and now we're jumping into phase three. So like I said before, phase three is very, very, very similar to phase one. Uh, the only difference is you do have acid spiders popping up and you do need to look out for the one hit spider. So yeah, I'm just chilling through phase 3, I'm doing damage when I can, and yeah, I'll probably pop off a Death Swiftness here. I didn't even want to put on my Ring of Vigor for extra adrenaline, that's how little gear I wanted to use. I didn't want to equip anything for this entire kill. Uh, so yeah, I'm in my Death Swift, just getting some extra damage per second, as you do, as you can. Uh, make sure to get off the boss when a Web Shield comes up. And that really is one of the worries about using high damage abilities, something like Death Swiftness, is if you get Web Shield at the wrong time, you can actually one-hit yourself, and that's the other reason why we have a Sign of Life. As you can see, I'm luring the acid spiders as they pop up. There's no harm in doing that. I'm just waiting for the fourth one to spawn, so I've already lured one through, and now I've got three of them following me. So then I go through Araxor, and then that'll lure two of them, and then I'm gonna go through them one more time. That'll lure the last one. As soon as the green bar that's right below the hit points bar is at half, that means that you lured all the spiders correctly. Uh, so yeah, now it's just all about doing a little bit of DPS and getting into Araxi. That's all there is to phase three. As you can see, I have tons of food left, and I'm not even using armor right now. And there we go, it's done. Okay, so now we've got a little cutscene as Araxi eats Araxor. If you spam click the surge button, you can actually surge out of the cutscene, which just lets you stall your adrenaline, which is nice if you want to do that, it's kind of helpful. Uh, but yeah, now that we're in Araxi, it's just all about the prayer switches, all about that. Uh, if you can pray switch, I actually didn't pray switch this perfectly, I messed up a couple times. Uh, but you know, you want to make them as good as possible, get as many proper prey switches up as possible, because that will save you a lot of food. And if you're eating a bunch of food, you're not doing much damage, because it's hard to hold a high adrenaline bar. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, I did not have anticipation there and I got cleave, but it didn't actually hit me because I spam clicked away. That's why it's so easy to dodge. But yeah, now we've passed 50k hit points and now we're almost at the acid wave. It's about to come as soon as it hits 25k life points and acid wave. So like I said, you stand in the same spot and then as soon as it hits you, you move. It hit me, so I moved. And that's all you got to do. And then focus on doing as much damage as you can. Get the fight over with as quickly as possible. And as you can see, I finished that kill with no armor, a tier 80 weapon, with a full invent of food left at the end. So yeah, there's your full complete Araxor kill. Alright guys, I know this video is super long. Bear with me. I'm going to really quickly talk about the other two paths and what they entail. Okay, so the first one we're going to talk about is the acid path. This is the middle path. When you take the acid path, you need to lure Araxor into the massive pool of acid. Once the acidity reaches 100%, you lure Araxor up to the top of the platform and the acidity will melt the platform. Also be aware that the one hit spider attack is also available in phase two if you take the acid path. And now for the much hated minion path. In the minion path, 20 minions will spawn five at a time. You need to kill them as quickly as possible. Now in most batches of five minions, one of them will be either a mirrorback or a pulsing spider. You need to kill these special spiders right away, as soon as you see them. The mirrorback spider will reflect any damage you do to a Raxor back on you, kind of like the web shield, but it'll actually hit you even more damage. If you do not notice a mirrorback spider, you're almost 100% sure to one hit yourself, so you need to kill them right away. Now the pulsing spider will heal a Raxor. You want to kill it as quickly as possible as well to avoid giving a Raxor more hit points. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about drops. Araxor is one of the most profitable bosses in the entire game. 
A spider leg piece is a 1 in 35 drop rate and has a value of 50 million GP. If you get all three spider leg pieces, you can make that into a spider leg that will sell for over 150 million coins. Now you also have the Araxes web, fang, and eye. This is a rare drop, but is worth between 5 mil if you get an eye and 110 mil if you get a fang. Obviously these prices are based on today, the date of this video being published, so make sure you check your prices before you go here. Now the other good drop is you can get two uncut onyxes. This is actually a fairly common drop and it's worth 3.4 mil. Other than that, all of the common drops are worth between 300 and 700 K. So every time you kill it, you're going to make profit. All right, that's it for the guide. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, if anyone has any questions or comments or concerns or anything, even like a specific gear choice that you're not really sure what to take or what's better than anything else, put it in the comment section below and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Now, the date I'm uploading this video, actually the Araxa rotation switched over to path two, three. So now is the perfect time to go and try yourself on your first Araxa kills. Okay, now I did cover the other two paths, but it was extremely brief. If you want me to make a full dedicated video to the other two paths, let me know because I can certainly do that very easily. Now, other than that, this video took me about 15 hours to make. So if you did enjoy, smack that like button. I really do appreciate it. Other than that, if you want to check out my new series, Road to 2.147 Billion GP Drop Tab, you can click on the screen right now or go in the description below. Anyway, guys, that's all from me. Have a good one. And as always, peace out. Happy Raxing. October gloves! Woo! Back and do that and get the kill and get a signal. Oh, it actually happened! <laughs> wow, well, you did a good job calling that.